All right, welcome back to game 10 of Lucid's 2022 tournament. It is turn number 17, and we are not launching our attacks this turn. Uh, we are being pretty tardy with this. We definitely could have moved eh, really just one turn sooner uh, with, you know, our, well, not even our full army. Uh, not that we would need our full army to raid in a lot of places, uh, but instead we chose to go with those mages. Speaking of those mages, uh, enchantment three for fire shield is done, uh, and then we're working on fire elementals as discussed. Alm has claimed uh, the throne that they grabbed, so, you know, that's not a good thing, uh, but better Alm claiming than Utgard at this point. There's a battle in Jabalba. This is definitely relevant to our interests, uh, so this is probably more or less everything that Jabalba has left, uh, facing off against what Midgard has on top, which is a mixture of, like, some of their mundane troops who are still pretty nasty, like, yeah, Berserker plus five, you can't ignore that, uh, and then just sort of a mixture of, <laughs> like, garbage and horror mercenaries. Uh, not much in the way of mage support, and no sacreds, uh, so I don't really see this working, well, I don't know. Iron hairs are pretty good, uh, but, yeah, I think this is going to work out for Shibalba. Uh, do they, they have some of their sacreds here? Uh, I recall their plus me. Fairly heavy on the strength, although it looks like they don't have much in the way of blessing available to them. Uh, so I do hear some blesses. That is on Midgard's side. Uh, so yeah, here, here are Jabalba's sacreds taking on just the mundane uh, Einherz. Yeah, that's maybe a little too fast. Um, yeah, some of them are going down. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to work out for Jabalba. Uh, that's a lot of crossbowmen too. That is one of the issues. I'm sure we've talked about it before. But our, our crossbowmen are kind of worse than indie crossbowmen in, in a lot of ways. Uh, I just I don't think our armor is really going to protect us all that well. Uh, and then they do have some skelly spam up, raised skeletons, so they're not quite to horde of skeletons yet. Uh, but they're probably not too far off. But luckily, like fire elementals are pretty good against skelly spam. So, yeah, I do think this is going to work out in our favor, um, and yeah, it do this does work out for Jabalba, although they lose most of their front line. Uh, so let's take a look at the losses. Uh, yeah, so I would say that, you know, Jabalba did pretty well here. Uh, they did lose, like I said, most of their front line, but they still have 50 of their crossbowmen, and they didn't lose any mage. You know, they lost one mage, uh, but otherwise, like, they still have plenty of skelly spammers left. Uh, this is probably it for Midgard. They do have one fort, but I can't imagine that they have too much left. Uh, so, yeah, we're definitely going to have to try to finish Jabalba off since we're planning on attacking them. Of course, I can't imagine we're the only ones <laughs> that have seen this, and probably if I was Utgard, I would just keep rolling into Shibalba, uh if they're aware that you know Midgard was attacking Shibalba. Uh So let's see. This is probably a throne, maybe? Um, or, nope, just some neutral province <laughs> taken by sea dogs. Uh, okay, this is interesting. So they've gone up alteration, so they have swarm available. That's nice to see their research. Uh, I also waste gems on independence. <laughs> I don't know if this is strictly necessary. Uh, I think probably even the crossbowmen alone. Well, I don't know, maybe not. The dogs are certainly seeing off, well, the flying bugs anyway. Uh, but, you know, combined with the long dead, the crossbowmen probably would have been enough. Uh, but like I said, I can't talk. I use bugs on independence all the time. Uh, so yeah, I can't imagine that the dogs came away with that. And, you know, other than the nature gems that were spent, uh, it was, you know, pretty clean. Only one long dead lost. So that is the advantage of using the bugs, is that you're going to lose less of your long dead. So perhaps the long dead are more important to Utgard uh, than nature gems. Uh, and then let's see, there's a battle between <laughs> Micklin and Kalem. So this is good to know. Uh, we do have a non-aggression pact with Micklin, uh, so we weren't too worried about them, uh, but we are worried about them at large, uh, since Midgard said that they're an excellent player, um, and they seem to have expanded pretty well. So let's take a look at the Bless. Uh, yeah, Magic Weapons, Quickness, Blood Surge, Strength 2. Uh, this is going to be pretty nasty. I don't really know Micklin that well, uh, but you cannot ignore Quickness, and of course Magic Weapons is really important. Blood Surge is rarely a bad pick. On uh, a little bit of extra strength never hurts. Uh, so no fire resistance again, so that's good. Uh, but they are going to kill anything and everything really, really quick. Uh, so, you know, how much it will matter, like how many fire spells we'll actually be able to get off, uh, especially once they get their uh, flying blood summons that can just, you know, jump into the rear. 
and mess, start messing with our mages really quickly. Uh, yeah, this is going to be really difficult to deal with, so <laughs> we'll have to think about that. Uh, they've also brought uh, a bunch of like slave troops just as chaff, it looks like, uh, and a few of their you know regular stone-throwing uh, slinger-like warriors. Uh, but it's really like the sacreds that are going to matter here. Kalem, you know, just has minimum, not minimum, the uh, standard province defense investment, it looks like, which definitely not going to stop an attack like this. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how Kalem responds to this. Uh, and then Utgard is continuing their attack into Midgard's territory. Uh, yeah, so they're they're headed towards Midgard's other throne, or throne, their other fort, uh, which, you know, that makes sense. And yeah, Midgard doesn't really have much in the way of province defense here. Uh, not that it would really matter <laughs> against this stack. But again, I got to wonder, I have to wonder, you know, like, there, there can't exist another stack like this. You know, I'm sure... There's probably, they're building up another stack, uh, but I gotta imagine that it's, you know, less than half this number of sacreds, which would still be scary. And like, yeah, this is not something that we're really in a position that we can easily beat it at this point. We might be able to hold it off if we were inside of a fort, um, but yeah, this is, this is gonna be tough to deal with, absolutely. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. There's, like I said, I think there's a decent chance that it just heads up immediately into Jabalba. Uh, but we might be able to recruit, like, Vettiheim. I know Vettiheim was somewhat interested in Miklin. Uh, but, yeah, I think Vettiheim needs to become a friend of ours <laughs> because, you know, if we can convince them that, like, Utgard is going to be, like, the more important target right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. It could be a hard sell, especially now that Miklin has attacked Kalem and, you know, is going to be at least a little bit busy. Uh, we have some unexpected events. I'm sure these will be great. Eh, this is all right. And then, of course, Barbarians. Uh, at least we get warned about it. <laughs> so we have an opportunity uh, to try to respond. So I'll have to try to remember that. Uh, and then, unfortunately, we get patrolled out in Kalem. Uh, so it looks like Kalem perhaps was already at war, uh, you know, with Miklin. Uh, or, you know, like I said, maybe they just, you know, they don't have any wars going on, so they're just using their armies to patrol uh, on top of their forts. I do approve of that. So I was just curious to see if I could get away with jumping on top of their capital. The answer is definitely no. Uh, so duly noted, and I will catch you guys after the jump. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, we are, of course, launching our attacks. Uh, we've discussed them at length. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it looks like standard amounts of province defense. You never know, uh, right? Because someone can always increase the level of province defense the turn that you're attacking. Uh, so you could always be attacking into a province defense dump, and, you know, our guys are not going to do great against that. It's probably a bit suspicious that, you know, all of a sudden these guys all appeared you know on the border but like I said I don't think most people uh, really attack with these guys <laughs> I'm also not uh, super convinced as to their efficacy uh, so you know we'll see how it goes maybe we're just throwing away a bunch of uh, you know cap only mages that are gonna be somewhat difficult and expensive to replace uh, we are of course moving up our main army as well which is a little more standard uh, it's just gonna be you know mouflon and crossbowmen along with some lesser fire elementals uh, from one of our brutal communions that we have cobbled together. Let's see, yeah, we only have two communion slaves here, so they're definitely going to burn out. <laughs> we have two masters. Uh, we, you know, could have tried to add some more, but I just feel like with Allegra's communions, you should pretty much just count on whatever communion slaves you bring dying. I'm sure if you bring enough, right, you can offload, you know, especially if the battles don't go too long, uh, but there's just, there's going to be a lot of off-path casting. Uh, at least, like, what we have scripted, other than the stone skin, uh, is mostly going to be on path, and, you know, hopefully our masters will fall asleep, uh, but, yeah, like I said, this is, they're probably going to get lost, uh, not 100% sure uh, where we're going to send this army just yet. Uh, you know, we do want to try to take this throne, uh, but Jalala has enough stuff. I mean, obviously, they're going to be able to stop our raiders. Uh, so our raiders, again, are, are just going to hit these provinces and then probably withdraw. And, of course, we do have to worry, you know, about this Utgard juggernaut moving up. Uh, they might be interested in, you know, Jabalba's capital. In some ways, it would be better if they get Jabalba's capital rather than going for the throne. Um, I am somewhat concerned. Like, we really don't have information yet on, like, how close they are in terms of a throne victory. We're starting to get scouts into position, and, and we're moving, you know, scouts towards uh, some other thrones. But, like, yeah, this throne is still going to be a mystery for a while. Um, and like, yeah, we're still trying to build scouts, but we basically don't know how close Utgard is yet. 
Also of note, uh, we've lost track of that Atlantean army. I suspect it went into the water here. Uh, so, you know, we're moving a scout here to hopefully reacquire it. There have been scouts pouring out of these uh, border provinces here. And, you know, we don't really have any dipl diplomatic agreements with Atlantis. So definitely concerned. Like, there's a good chance they're going for this throne, uh, which we've discussed. But it's also possible they're looking to attack us. Uh, also, we see some troops building up on our border with Alm. Uh, this is a province that we bumped with Ulm over. Now this is, you know, kind of a difficult angle for them to attack by, but they might be interested in, you know, picking up a few provinces uh, while Atlantis makes the main attack. They're, they also could easily just be covering their fort construction, right? This is a throne. Um, so yeah, could be defensive in nature, uh, but definitely, you know, this has been reinforced and is growing. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And then we'll also have to keep an eye on this war between Calum and Miklan. It does look like Miklan, you know, maybe had already started this war or was able to push, you know, pretty deeply uh, into Calum's territory. Uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely want to keep an eye on that. We are, you know, at peace with Miklan, uh, but they are somebody, you know, we're concerned about everybody in this game. Otherwise, most of the rest of this is site searchers. We are building a lab in this province uh, because one of these sites allows recruitment of these witches. Earth one, nature one, not fantastic, but they will be useful like forging utility mages. Obviously, you know, we don't have any native nature access and nature is a pretty useful forging path. Our pretender can cover both of these, but you know, if we can have other mages doing our forging rather than our pretender, that's, you know, much more effective. Uh, so while we probably won't build a fort here, uh, we, you know, we will need a temple as well since these mages are sacred. And, you know, we'll just pop some of these out, like, not very frequently, but we probably also won't want a ton of them. They're not going to be super effective battle mages. In terms of infrastructure, we probably do want another fort. We were thinking possibly uh, this location would be a good spot. Also, obviously, if we take this throne province, we will need to put a fort onto that immediately. Uh, and then troop recruitment-wise, I think it's still... Okay, yeah, we are producing some of these uh, Cyclopses. Yeah, we'll see about them. Uh, we are limited, right? We can only recruit a uh, maximum of three in any one location uh, each turn. And we are recruiting some of our infantry as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've talked about how maybe we can just use the crossbowmen as our infantry, but I figured it probably wouldn't be the, the worst idea to have some Helit soldiers, uh, you know, even if it's just like one squad of them, so we can kind of compare, you know, how they do kill-wise uh, versus the crossbowmen and you know how well both groups hold up so we probably will recruit some more infantry in other places uh, but for the most part we are still focused on crossbowmen and of course mouflon uh, we are going to get another one of our oppressor archons uh, we'll probably want a couple more of these guys but yeah i mean they're going to be useful centerpieces uh in you know some of our communions relatively early on but they just they don't have too much in the way of hit points or protection they're just very very squishy so long term i don't think we can really rely on these guys for a lot of our big spells so while they are going to be really useful in a lot of ways they kind of feel like mm, maybe going to be better you know for site searching and like maybe some forging and casting even for ritual casting like most of their pathing tends to be pretty spread out and low so yeah not sure how useful these guys are going to be uh, but at the end of the day you know once our capital blows up <laughs> right and the tyrants become available uh tyrants are recruited out of the capital and you know we're not we're not really going to be as easy Every time we try to replace either of these cap only mages, it's going to be, you know, at the cost of not getting a tyrant. That said, tyrants cost, I think, 600 gold. So each tyrant is equal to building a new fort. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, our capital will have blown up. So we're going to be getting less money from that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to build a tyrant like every turn i can't imagine that their upkeep is too kind either they're not sacred uh so yeah i don't know we'll we'll see how many tyrants we actually end up being able to recruit but it is a consideration you know we want to try to get as many of these guys out as possible before you know turn 30 ish and I think that more or less covers turn 17. Welcome back to game 10 of Luce's 2022 tournament where we are playing Flegra. It is turn 18. We have launched our attack against Shivalva. I've not done diplomacy in a little while, as is my style. Uh, and it looks like we actually found a magic site here with our pretender. That is nice, Moonvine Circle. We like nature gems, uh, but at this point we're really kind of looking more for earth gems. I don't think we've found any yet, which is a bit problematic. Uh, looks like we also witnessed some battles in this ongoing war between Miklan and Kalem. Looks like Miklan is doing the majority of the attacking, and they found some independent Bakamono, a very popular raiding option. 
pretty solid rating option against, yeah, pretty light PD. I think it's six province defense of, well, pretty standard type for late age. You see, like, Bakamono still pretty effective, even in the late age. Uh, I do think they're probably a little less effective since the province defense types are a bit tougher, uh, but, yeah totally viable raider. Speaking of totally viable raiders, <laughs> I'm sure nothing will go wrong with this. Uh, we're up against a pretty easy province defense type, so that's good news. We do spend a gem doing this, of course, uh, but we are fairly safe. Now we have, yeah, fire shield and stone skin. You know, we do. We also spend some gems. Yeah, that's the thing with the elementals. Oftentimes, like, they just go around, uh, but luckily, yeah, we... We get the route on this pretty easy PD type, but that's a little dangerous for our other ones because uh, if some more dangerous stuff manages to wrap, that could get bad. Uh, but we do at least take that province, spending only a gem. Uh, and then we witness another battle between Utgard and uh, Van Midgard. Uh, probably just province defense. Yeah, Fort PD. Quite a bit of Fort PD. Uh, I'm guessing that Midgard probably just doesn't have a whole lot left to spend money on. Um, but, you know, unlike in previous ages uh, where they get some elven troops, these are just humans, I believe. Like, no glamour or anything like that. And like, they're decent human troops, but against these giant sacreds, they probably won't even get a single kill. Uh, they'll probably kill at least some of the long dead, uh, so that's something. And, you know, uh, causing afflictions to the troops, these sacreds, like, does matter. Uh, but, you know, Ugard's still looking uh, very dangerous. Yeah, they didn't even manage to kill that many of the long dead. These long dead giants uh, do have more hit points than most long dead, so they're a little tougher to kill. Uh, and then we have another one of our attacks against Shibalba. We'll see how this goes. Same kind of plan, yeah. This is a more dangerous province defense type, and, you know, it's going to be a lot faster. So hopefully our lesser fire elemental, nope. He just goes right by. Yeah, we take a lot of hits there. So this probably is not going to work out for us, especially since we didn't manage to get the fire shield up, uh, unless we kill their leadership. Uh, so that is not impossible. What are you doing back here? Uh, but yeah, the bat has managed to get ahead. Yeah, so we go down. So yeah, not the best plan. Um, that's pretty high investment and for pretty pitiful results. <laughs> Uh, so that one does not work out for us. We do bump into just some random stuff, probably some retreats. Uh, so we'll have to, we'll have to rethink this rating strategy. Uh, I knew it was going to be a little on the <laughs> sketchy side. Uh, it's not working out. And this looks like one of Micklin's uh, larger forces. I think we've seen this before. Uh, it's just up against some province defense, uh, an easier type. Uh, they'll probably lose a few of their uh, chaff. Yeah, but nothing that they can't uh, handle. Uh, and then we have our final raid. <laughs> Probably be the last of these. Uh, when I was testing, uh, I gave him some bodyguards because, uh, you know, he's a giant, so he can lead some of our Cyclops troops who refuse to be led uh, by anybody that is smaller than them. Uh, but, you know, this, when, I'm, when I've been playing, I'm just, I'm not totally sold on those Cyclops troops. Oof, 18. Is that from like a short bow? Wow. Oh no, it's crossbow. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, like, these fire elementals, they just, uh, I was not anticipating, I knew there was some danger of rap, uh, but they seem to be set to, like, attack rear, or I don't know what the deal is, and, like, yeah, they, they just get ignored by the troops. Uh, so I was not expecting that as much. Uh, luckily, yeah, it's, again, because this guy's fire one, so he fell asleep for a long time. Yeah, we got the leadership. Very, very odd rating. <laughs> this is, uh, not quite the results I was expecting. Uh, you know, I was concerned. The lesser fire elementals actually can get chopped down by mundane troops if there's enough of them. So I was a little concerned that, you know, the fire elemental would just die. I was not anticipating that the forces just miss each other <laughs> so effectively. Still, two out of three uh, is not the worst result, although, you know, we do spend eight fire gems on that escapade because uh, we lose uh, the armor of the, the guy that was killed. Uh, so yeah, we probably will, you know, raid again at some point with the Cyclops Smiths, uh, but not for a while, and, you know, we're not going to rely on it as much. Again, I think the main advantage there is that, you know, Jibalba just wouldn't, hopefully wasn't expecting it. Uh, and that does appear to be the case, right? We were up against six province defense each time. Um, but of course, you know, without our main army following up, we might not be able to hold those gains. And we were thinking about going against the throne, so yeah, we'll see. We have an unexpected event in a place where we're building our fort. It does finish. <laughs> yeah, we lose 20 province income. Ouch, that is painful, but we are Misfortune 3. 
Uh, but finishing the fort is nice. Uh, we do need to get another fort started. I think I'm a little light on infrastructure, uh, probably particularly for late age Falegra. I feel like you know we want a decent number of forts to push out a lot of those uh, communion slave mages and really just our mages in general. Uh, so anyway, I'll catch you guys after the cut. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Well, at least two out of our three raids worked, <laughs> even if they weren't the best raiders. I definitely did uh, that testing, you know, when I was uh, just trying various things for Falegra uh, with bodyguards, but, you know, we just didn't really have time to get bodyguards together, and I figured, ah, it should be fine against Sixth Province Defense. But of course, as being late age, there's a lot more heavy cav out there. Uh, so we're pulling one of our raiders back. Uh, you know, he's just going to hang out and forge and research for us. Really probably should have never been in the field to begin with. Uh, we're not really planning on holding this province. Uh, this province we are going to maybe try to hold. We'll see. Uh, so we're just going to do some site searching here. You know, we PD dumped a little bit. Uh, it's probably just going to be bats that make it out like this quickly this far uh, so I do think this fellow uh, famous last words with the province defense uh, can beat you know any bats that come out uh, we do eventually want to put a fort here but we'll probably wait a little bit because we won't really be able to cover that fort just yet uh, and then also in the questionable side of things uh, we're going to go ahead and attack this throne I'm not really sure where that Atlantean force went I don't I mean maybe this is some of it uh, but it looked significantly larger uh, when we lost track of it and I think it went underwater uh, so yeah we're just we're going to try to take this throne not a whole lot to the plan right we're <laughs> just mostly relying on crossbowmen uh, mouflon we are bringing our pretender in uh, so that'll help and then you know just some lesser fire elementals and then whatever they choose to do after that uh, this is definitely a questionable decision you know I kind of went back and forth I think you know, if we go, if we take this army and head for Shabalba's capital, I don't think there's any way that we end up with this throne. In best case scenario, Atlantis ends up with it. Well, you know, yeah, best case, right? It's not a great case. Uh, the other scenario is that Utgard pushes for it and takes it, uh, which could be game ending. Now, all that said, I'm not sure, rather, I don't think that we can stop Utgard, at least not this stack from Utgard uh, at this moment. Uh, but at the same time, like, this is a pretty far, like, reach for them, and, you know, they may not want to antagonize uh, another player when, you know, it's likely that there's a lot of people that are going to be pretty worried about them, and their other bigger neighbors are probably going to be looking to attack them, or at least, you know, worried about what they're up to and interested in a coalition against them. Uh, so if we already hold this, you know, it may diplomatically prevent them from jumping in immediately, thinking like, hey, we can just grab it from Flegra pretty easily later, uh, which we will hope to disprove. Uh, or they'll just come in immediately, right, because they're in the area and they're like, we can take it now, let's just go for it. Uh, so we'll see, but I, I don't know, I have a feeling that they're going to at least be tempted to just keep moving on Jabalba. Because I think at this point, it's fairly well known, right, that Jabalba isn't in the strongest position, and there will be other people attacking. And of course, the other side of that equation is that if we push hard on Jabalba's capital, again, I don't really think we can hold it, at least, you know, not from this force here. And so in a lot of ways, attacking Jabalba's capital is more likely to draw us into a war uh, with Utgard. And the other thing, too, is like, well, if they're throne rushing, we're going to have to fight them anyway. Whereas if they're going for Jabalba's capital, that's not great, but it's also not an emergency situation. And we can potentially wait until they do make a play, right, for a throne rush, and assuming we're able to defend this throne, we can then also take that time, you know, to try to grab Shabalba's capital uh, from them. That's, of course, assuming that they are going to go for Shabalba's capital, right? They may have other things that they want to do, other places that they need their army. Uh, so we probably won't hang out on this throne. We probably will still send our army uh, towards Shabalba's capital, if only to try to lock down more of their territory. Uh, and then we are moving forward uh, some of our Mouflon, right? So we're going to try to start using, I think, you know, Mouflon groups like this, though they probably don't need to be this large. We could probably split this. Uh, so we might, you know, use this commander out here. Uh, but we'll start using groups like that uh, to do more raiding against Jabalba's territory. Uh, and speaking of Mouflon groups, we are sending one in uh, where we failed our raid, although there's a fair chance that Ukard splits out, you know, someone. I don't think there's a ton of leadership with this army. 
yeah, it's pretty light on leadership, so it's not impossible that Utgard could, you know, split out a raiding force, but they can't split that much. I mean, they can really just split once, and even then, just barely, right? This guy only has 10 leadership, uh, so, like, really, they're relying on this fellow. Uh, so while this is a really dangerous force, uh, you know, it's not going to be able to take a ton of provinces uh, at a time. You know, it's going to be one province at a time, mostly. So this should be a fairly safe raid, unless we run into a ton of province defense, uh, you know. But, I don't know, we'll see. Seven Mouflon, that can take on a good amount. Uh, it is an extremely valuable province, uh, so we do want to try to secure this. Uh, otherwise, doing our site searching, of course, we're a little low on money, sadly, uh, so we're not doing full troop recruitment, but we are recruiting Mouflon in the capital. Our, our, our presser is about to finish, and we're going to do one more smith. Maybe over-recruiting these smiths, they're not incredibly useful mages. It does depend a lot on the randoms that they get, uh, but I am hoping like once we get a bit more construction that they'll make like for decent thugs. And otherwise, out of our capital, we're pretty much just looking at the oppressors, uh, which we probably will focus on more from this point forward until we get the tyrants. But again, I do think that they're going to have a pretty limited window uh, in which they're going to be really effective. And in some ways, uh, the oppressors, like, kind of already, since, you know, everything gets built into a communion anyway, there's really, like, no avoiding it with Falegra. Uh, like, they already have, like, most of the same elemental magic, right, that the oppressors have. The oppressors, you know, have higher magic, but again, that only matters for rituals or sight searching. I mean, it matters a little bit for battle, certainly. You have to bring, you know, less communion slaves, and you, you get better results for some spells with higher pathing. Uh, but these guys also kind of have a critical weakness in that, you know, they have Astral 1, and we have no Astral otherwise in our nation. So, like, these guys are just begging to get magic dueled, and there's lots of, like, low-level cheap Astral in the late age. So, yeah, you know, I just, I don't know. I'm not sold on these guys. Uh, so anyway, that's that's what we're doing, mage recruitment in the capital. Uh, otherwise, we are recruiting, yeah, a few more of these. Speaking of not being sold, I don't know. We're going to recruit a couple of them. Like I said, these are the guys we were using, or I was using as bodyguards uh, on the Cyclops Smiths. And, you know, the Smiths, if we're going to use them as raiders, definitely could use bodyguards. Uh, you know, these guys aren't the worst troops. You know, they do have the magic weapons. Yeah, we've talked about them. I'm recruiting some of them. We'll give it a shot. Uh, otherwise, uh, Shackled Mage uh, for those brutal communions that we're going to need to cobble together. And that pretty much covers it. It does look like uh, Alm was just covering their fort construction. They pulled those troops back, so we're probably not going to get attacked by Alm. It wasn't ever super likely, you know, this being a really awkward, uh, you know, place to attack through, a really small border. Uh, still a little concerned about Atlantis. You know, we don't really know what they're up to. You know, they have some troops somewhat close to the border. Uh, so, you know, yeah, Atlantis we're going to have to keep an eye on, and we are kind of, you know, going to be pulling the majority of our troops off of the border. Now, I mean, granted, we're going to have our whole army on the border here, but then we are planning on moving away with it. So we probably are going to want to leave, you know, some troops behind in case Atlantis does decide to attack. Uh, and then in terms of research, yeah, currently we are trying to get Conjuration 5 for those fire elementals. I do think that'll help against Utgard, uh, but we might, you know, shuffle things. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think Flaming Arrows will also help quite a bit. Uh, that's what Enchantment 4 will get us. And then we do want to make it up to Enchantment 6 and hopefully eventually 7. And then, of course, construction research is going to be really relevant uh, once the Tyrants come out. Uh, but... I have had some thoughts towards uh, Alteration. I think Incinerate would be a really useful tool against those Sacreds. Uh, and then I think we will eventually want to go up to Alteration 6 for Soul Vortex uh, because our Tyrants can cast that. So, you know, it's not like it's going to be wasted research later on. Uh, so we'll see. You know, we might cut uh, the construction research because we can't really... I mean, we can we could, we could forge some stuff for those Cyclops Smiths. Uh, but it's probably not worth, you know, warping our research. I think we would get better use uh, out of alteration, though we do definitely eventually want at least construction for uh, for our tyrants. Uh, but all that will still be a little ways off. I do think I underbuilt infrastructure a bit, uh, particularly with Falegra, because uh, I think, you know, we, we just want a lot of mages, and our mages are relatively cheap. Uh, and then also, you know, with the magic scales, we're not really getting, like, quite the advantage of, you know, the extra research because we're not pushing out, you know, probably as many mages as we should be. 
Uh, so, I mean, you know, a lot of that was the result of lackluster expansion. You know, he just didn't have a ton of places to put forts. Uh, and, you know, we had to be careful about not wiping out our resources. Uh, but also just, you know, somewhat inexperience with Flegra and inexperience in general. Uh, so, yeah, I think that more or less covers turn 18.